All right. In this video, I'm going to show you how to identify and mark and label moons in your images using both Afterglow and Stellarium. I'm going to share my screen. Okay, here we are in Afterglow. And as you can see, I've already loaded in a few images. We have one image of Jupiter, image of Saturn, and two images of Neptune. Let's start with the image of Jupiter. Now remember, when you first load your images in, they'll load in with the default brightness and contrast preset. And planets are pretty bright, and that means they're going to be saturated. And we can see that here with Jupiter. But the default preset's actually pretty good for finding moons. And we can see one, two, three, four moons going around Jupiter. These are the four large moons of Jupiter, the Galilean satellites. Question is, which one's which? So for that, we're going to use Stellarium. I've already opened it up, ready to go. Now, before we get too far, let's make sure that we're still in universal time. That we come over here to the location window. Indeed, the time zone is set to universal time. So that's good. And next, we want to get rid of the ground, get rid of the atmosphere. So we're looking at the stars. And then we need to find Jupiter. So we're going to go to the search window. Took us over to Jupiter, and we can zoom in here. As you can see, there's Jupiter and its moons, but the moons are not horizontal like in our image. They're on some kind of diagonal. And so to correct that, we come down here and press the telescope icon. And we'll reorient the sky in Stellarium uh, in the same fashion that uh, a telescope would image it. Okay, so we got the, the moons here. And then the last thing we need to set is the time. I'm going to change the date and time to when we took this image. So coming back to Afterglow and coming down to the File Info tab, here's the date and time right there. So this picture of Jupiter I took 2019, February 24th, 909. Okay. Let's compare that to our image. Now, if you want, you can click off the planet that gets rid of all those words that may make it easier to see. And we have one, two, three, four moons, but the pattern's not the same. These two are close together, then these are far apart. If you look over here, these are far apart, and then these are close together. So the issue is our picture is upside down. And that can happen if you don't have a lot of stars in your image, Skynet doesn't know which way to display it. And that will be the case with pictures of Jupiter and pictures of Saturn, pictures of really bright objects where you had to do a short exposure and consequently you didn't detect any stars. So Skynet doesn't know how to orient the image. And in this case, it came in upside down. But that's easy enough to fix. We go back to the display tab and rotate it 180 degrees. And that should match what we have in Stellarium. Too close together, too far apart. And so this is Europa, Ganymede, Io, and Callisto. Okay, let's zoom in, and frame it up. And now we're going to mark and label the moons. So for that, we come over to the marker tab. And if you want to make your life a little bit easier, you can turn on centroiding. This way you don't have to click exactly on the center of the moon. Afterglow will centroid the marker for you. You just have to get kind of close. I'm adding these markers. And then to add labels, you just click on it, type them in. This one was Europa. This one was Ganymede. This one's Io, and this one is Callisto. Okay. Now there's some other things here. You can change the size of your marker if you want. You can change the gap. 
between the label and the marker, and you can change the orientation of where the label is. But once you get it the way you want, frame it up a final time, and then you can save it using the camera icon here. Okay, that was Jupiter. Let's try Saturn. So we have Saturn here. So coming back to Stellarium, I'm gonna change the object. I'm gonna search on Saturn. There it is. And we also have to change the date and time to match the date and time that we took this image. And this particular image of Saturn was taken in 2018, October 1st, 3.31. The seconds really don't matter. Let's see if this matches up. Let's get rid of those words. And it does pretty nicely. Uh, looking at Saturn here, we have a moon there, a moon there. So another object over here. If I check, the moon over here has to be Titan. This one has to be Rhea. Let's see if there's a moon over here. There isn't. So that means that this object here is just a background star. I'm not going to worry about it. Now if we look here close to Saturn, there are more moons. We have Titan and Rhea matching these two. But closer in, there's Dione, Tethys, and Solidus, and Mimas. And those are lost in the sky glow of Saturn, but we can recover some of them. So let me show you how to do that. You come back to the display tab, and we're going to change the saturation level. If we increase the saturation level, it diminishes the sky glow. We can see there are two of the moons, and we can't pull out the other two. Back it up a little bit. We can at least recover two of them, this one and this one, which is Dione and Tethys. So Titan, Dione, Tethys, and Rhea. Frame it up as you like. Go back to the marker tab. Add the markers. And then you can go and add the labels. I won't do all of them, I'll just do one here, Titan. But you would add the labels for all of them and then save it. Okay, last example is Neptune. And Neptune is actually really easy. There's only one moon that we can see. It's always really close to the planet. So zoom right in, that's Neptune. And this is Triton. They can just Add a marker, add a label, right in. There we go. And just to prove to you that it's Triton and not some background star, here's another picture of Neptune I took the very next day. You can see it's moved. Here it is, day one, day two. Triton takes about a week a little bit less than a week to go completely around so you can see it moving from day to day. Okay, that's it for this video.